<laughs> All right, I got 401, so we're going to call the meeting to order. So if you can please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you for those of you who are here and those who may be online for attending our study session tonight. So our study session will be on the preparation for the interview phase for the deputy successor superintendent. So I will let Tracy take the lead and I will let Tracy introduce our guest. Great. So uh, you all know Bill Jordan. Uh, with Northwest Leadership Associates, and that's the search firm that's assisting the district and the board with this process. And so uh, Bill's here tonight to kind of walk the board through the next steps in the process. So with that, I'll just turn it right over to you, Bill. Great, thank okay. you, Mr. President and board and Dr. Pierce. Yeah, I, what I want to do is uh, let you know what next steps are and then answer any questions. And um, First of all, I'll let you know that the brochure is out that went to all the school districts, not just the school districts in the state, but to um, interested um, uh, deputy superintendents, assistant superintendents. It also went to the lead for the departments of superintendent trainings in the colleges and universities, and then throughout the Northwest and around the state the postings on the WASA website, on the WASDA website. And um, I've sent out, in addition to people receiving those, when I get a contact, I send out an application packet. And that application packet is a letter that describes the process. It's um, the application, fillable application, and um, the brochure that describes the position. Then also, I attach the um, a representation of the organizational chart, the responsibilities of the deputy successor superintendent. So those are out there. Um, the interest level has been, uh, I would say, um, a little slow, not, uh, as, not as much as I would anticipate for um, the significance of the position. I've talked to uh, and and personally sent out uh, over 20 application packets. I have one completed application. But I am talking with um, superintendents that are uh, have requested packets and also uh, deputy uh, superintendent, assistant superintendent positions. Also, uh, the, some of those conversations are, um, tell me more about the, um, the duties. The, the organizational chart really helps um, the understanding that there's work to do in addition to spending time with the board next year and with uh, Tracy. There's uh, the supervision of the operations side of the district. That helped clear clarify um, that there's real work. It's not just shadowing superintendent. Also, um, we talk about the board. You know, how's the board? Do they get along? Uh, how long they've been around? Um, what's their um, uh, um, uh, thinking about strategic planning and relationships? Then that's where you've made it clear you want in the brochure, someone to build relationships and trust with the community and with um, with employees. I talk with them about the importance of the writ written part of this application, where they spend time addressing the uh, challenges and opportunities, so that you can read those, and then when it gets to March 13th, when we uh, get into executive session, we talk about those 
um, writings and those people and how they've written, whether they've, whether what they've written has resonated with you to the point where you want to talk with them further. And then that brings up being preliminary interviews. So the, um, I've had some superintendents um, that are going to um, just remain where they are. They, they are, they are interested, but they uh, want to just stay with. Uh, with uh, they and it's interesting because they so they requested the application pack packet, but um, they just decided no, we'll going to stay where we are. And a lot of that conversation happens after they've sat down with their board in an executive session and talked about, here's what I'm thinking, and the board, and they discuss, well, here's what the future likes, looks like in the district. It's part of that because they have to notify their board that, as soon as they notify their board that they are interested, right, then that almost sends a message to the board that they could be leaving and the board almost needs to start looking and that's kind of... It's, the, it's <clears throat> um, yes. Yeah. The short answer to that is yes. The, the relationship the six of you have is unique and um, needs to be protected. Yeah. And some of the dynamics around that kind of conversation can change um, change the relationship. So um, I've also talked to superintendents who said they had that they've had that conversation and told the board they're going to apply and and will receive their application. So they um, they say they're getting along fine with their board, so they're not leaving under duress, but they have made it known that they feel it's time to leave or seek something else. Um, Scary move. <laughs> Bill, too, um, we kind of talked about this when we had our, our call, but the fact that it's kind of a it's it's kind of an odd superintendent search with it being this role for one year versus you're coming in and you're you're getting like a three year contract out of the gate and this is more of like the one year and then and then the three year so it, it's kind of like made made some little uneasy that it's kind of a guaranteed mm -hmm. one year right yeah. is, is that it is it is um, it is part of the conversation because it's a one year contract. Yeah. And at the end of that one year, I, I, either party can actually probably make a different decision. Right. And that's how it goes. It it's um it's not as much of a deterrent as I as I thought it might be. Okay. It's in fact I haven't heard it um, be a, a a point where it caused people not to apply. And I think one of the reasons is there's there's definite work to do. There's a there's the ability to build relationship with the board and work with Tracy for a year. That um, uh, there there's there the people that are going to apply are trusting that hey this is going to work and yeah we're just we're just going to move ahead with it. But it always comes up as how's what's the board like. Uh, and, and things go well in a year, am I going to get that job? And I, I'm saying, yeah, that's that's the plan. And I would express to them, we would be in a very difficult situation if that didn't happen, because then we would suddenly not have a succession plan. So in, in a lot of respects, we'd be in a much more difficult situation than even they would be, because we would be scrambling well, you're, for something. You're exactly right. And that's why, that's why this is so critical in the planning. That you get the right person. That a year from now you're still confident this is the right person. So right. that's why we need to use some rigor now. You mentioned one thing at the very beginning that that uh, the applications a little slower coming in. Um, you mentioned a couple of things. Are there are there any other big reasons that you see that that could easily be remedied? Or the no, I don't believe it's a it's not a district issue. It's. Um, just superintendents, and I would also say 
um, CFOs or finance people are just really hard to find. We don't, we used to get multiple, we'd get 20, 30 applications for a superintendent position, and it's just not happening like that. In a district this size, actually there's probably less um, completed applications than for a district in a smaller size where people are starting out and looking for that next level step. This is a big step. This is a big yeah. a big responsibility here in the big district. So Yeah, I gotta go from being an yeah, this is, you're, you typically you go to a, a smaller district, right? And then then as the district, I guess, not jump all the way to a district. Like There's two two decisions. There is a decision that superintendent candidates have to make. Tracy and I made these decisions when we decide to be superintendents. You either go to a smaller district from your principalship or your executive director position, or assist, you know. And, and jump right into a, a smaller district superintendent and make that transition then either from that <clears throat> level or uh, to the next level. Or you uh, many times become a, an assistant or a deputy superintendent in a mid-sized district or a larger district and then make your transition to the superintendency. It works one of those two ways. So we've I've talked to people that are in that assistant deputy uh, range in districts that uh, will be applying, and also superintendents in, I would call them mid-sized districts that are interested in the position. Is there is the um, time of year, is there a time of year that superintendents or, or somebody who's maybe looking to make that jump, is there a time of year that they would expect a job opening to be, be looking versus now, or is there a time? Yeah, well, not, no, <laughs> typically, it's typically um, when, uh, from my experience, over the over the Christmas vacation time is um, many times when the people reflect on their uh, oh, Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Shortly after that, so we opened this in a timely manner. Um, this is the time the superintendents and, and high level administrators typically have their evaluations, um, make make making career decisions. So we're we're in line with that. Okay. Yeah. Did you look beyond Washington State and did you look at Yes, we put out um, yeah, it's it's all over. Um, but I haven't received an inquiry from from elsewhere. We have a person that's interested that was a superintendent in Oregon and uh, uh, one from Idaho that um, has experience in Idaho. And you've also looked at um, people outside of the school system, like executives or accountants. And, you mentioned, and, and we've not received and you mentioned any, those are hard to get yeah, those no, people to come over. Yeah. Uh, I've seen successful superintendents, so have you, uh, where I think John Stanford was a superintendent in Seattle. Remember that? And he was military background. I've seen several. Um, one uh, superintendent was the uh, vice a vice president at Kroger Foods and wound up being superintendent federal way. So those are I've seen that happen and work. Well, and actually one other one in this region where the board president, who was an attorney. Uh, wound up uh, resigning and being named superintendent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. Third name in the ring. Board attendant. So, um, the um, so the next time we meet is March 13th. The close it closes on the 8th, and um, at that point, you when you get to that meeting. And I'm, I'm asking you for the time or for you to speculate on when we should get together on that day. You will have read every completed application. And so you should come to the meeting with an idea of who best matches what you said was important on the brochure, about characteristics, 
qualifications and, and in the uh, they're meeting the challenges and opportunities. So you should have read them all. You may have an idea when you come in and I, I want to make sure and talk to this person. And that's that meeting then is reviewing their qualifications, <coughs> their applications, and then the board determining how many of those do you want to speak with and interview. And those interviews take place on the 20th and 21st. When should we anticipate getting all of those uh, applications? You probably get them um, if that's a Wednesday, probably hopefully the weekend before or pretty close. So it closes so on I'm the gonna 8th, get, Actually, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send those to you and you're going to get them out. But so we can, get a, we can get them one at a time too, right? We don't have the... As soon as I get them from you, yeah. we'll send them. Yeah, so there's one completed and then we completed and there's five others that are kind of in that. I would say, yeah, that's that may be a good number. Yeah. That's pretty close to what we had last time. Uh, so kind of working through the, the packet. What's that? I think the packet's pretty big, right? So they're working through getting all the yeah, stuff they, to them. Yeah, the we're room. asking for, you know, six four to six letters of recommendation. We're asking them to write uh, academically in, to the challenges and opportunities to fill out the application, present a resume. And um, so if they come in closer to the eight, then what I'm doing, I, I now have the information I need to do some of the background on. I can do some preliminary, like, uh, talking to, uh, I've already started that. If, if if a person is interested in the job, I can I start asking around now. I have to be careful that, especially some of them who say, don't I don't want anything public until the 20th, basically, right. um, or a media release at that time, or real close to, it, you know, for the. Um, for those interviews. So so roughly around the 8th, which is a Friday, we should anticipate that we'll have <coughs> most of the applications, if not all? Yeah, you that weekend, okay. yes. Okay. I'll get them out. If there's, um, usually there were one or two that may have reference letters still coming in or something like that. But the, the critical part of the application, um, the formal application, their resume, their writing, all of that needs to be done. Think, think about like just the board back. Yeah. Same with the board back. Yeah, that's why I was just right. making sure. Yeah. Ideally, we have at least part of the weekend. So I'm going to be Debbie Downer over here. So what happens if we get four resumes and we're underwhelmed with all four? What then, do we do now? Then we start over. You, yeah, don't, you don't. You don't. You uh, don't. Don't spend any time on anything you, that, that we think is not worth uh, looking at. We. It's it's too big a job and too important. And if we don't get the quality, no, we don't. We just won't move forward. Yeah. yeah. No. It's a that's a great question. And we we talked about this a little bit on on the call earlier this week. Um, if we don't receive candidates that we want to move forward with then then we'll pause until the fall and then restart back up and kind of do a, a regular s superintendent <coughs> search i guess at that point okay, well i was looking at the nose also asked about the law about indentured service <laughs> yeah, this, this is automatically mean you're going to exactly. kick your retirement yeah, back a year because yeah. i can already tell you that yeah, we just keep extending the contract yeah, exactly. we couldn't find anybody <laughs> like, i think you signed a contract too bad yeah <laughs> we looked really hard couldn't find anybody yeah, exactly. <laughs> going to be an empty chair up there. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but, but I just want to add to that because I think one thing we talked about on that call was, you know, so plan B, if that if that happens, we still need a, um, a CFO and, you know, that, that assistant suit, deputy suit position to oversee operations. So, you know, a plan B could be, well, this didn't, process didn't work. I mean, I hope it does. I think it will. But if it doesn't this time around, then we shift gears. We just post for an assistant soup position for operations, not to be the yes. successor. We get that and then 
start do this again same time next year <laughs> essentially and it's just for the super it's just for the superintendent yeah. Yeah. And, and along those lines you these people that you've talked to before I mean, are, are we feeling pretty confident we're gonna have good applicants then mm -hmm. Yeah. We've seen one. We've seen one really, really good one. <laughs> yeah, like last time. We saw it too. <laughs> On March uh, 13th, so time, typically exec session happens after the business portion of the meeting, okay. so it just kind of depends. We've tried to keep the agenda for the business portion of the meeting limited so it doesn't go really late, so the board mm -hmm. has a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, but if we do it before, then there's a finite time. I mean, it has to end. So the, I think the thinking was it would be exec session, hopefully starting around like, I don't know, 7, 7.30 after the business portion of the meeting. And then you have as long as you need to determine which of the candidates you're going to bring in for preliminary interview. So is that I think we've got work? On the end of the meeting. And the and the yeah, meeting. We, it yeah, works for me. I'm okay. fine with it. Yeah. Okay. We have a short, yeah we, yeah, we purposely kept it short so we can get through the meeting, do the business, and then get into the So we have, we have the primary work of um, <clears throat> determining who you want to talk to. Another thing we'll talk about that night are interview questions. So you'll be thinking about those now. And... Um, they can be anything that makes sense to you in relation to what you want to know about this person and their qualifications for the uh, for the uh, for the job. Legal, legal. <laughs> Are you like Trace? <laughs> legal questions. The um, so we'll we'll and, and we'll want those questions. They don't need to be finalized that night. We don't want to get down to anything that. I'll give you I'll give you uh, the opportunity to look at some maybe some draft questions. So and you can um, could we give those to you? Could we give those questions to you now or early? That I'm I, I'm prepared to do it at any time. I'm okay. that up to, to you all. You? Uh, yeah, the the one question we have with honestly with the interview questions is if we do it we don't want the questions to be leaked out and the candidates being able to get them online yeah, or social sure. media or anything. Yeah, so sure. um, I think if my personal opinion would be if we wait till the 13th, we go through the, the questions, we, we come up with the questions there and then we have them. Um, again, I just, we don't want the candidates to have all the questions so they come in and prep for two weeks before they, they come and answer them. But, but I appreciate I'm open to whatever. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you providing some draft questions, some some different ideas. Okay, I think that'd yeah. be helpful. We'll do that for sure. And so, what I could do because in the in the email that you sent to us, there's that initial set of draft questions. Yeah. I could send those out to you all, and then individually. I mean, we don't can't have a meeting, right? Right. Um, but individually, if you've got after you've looked at that, if you've got questions that you think you d want to come off of that or questions that you want to add you could just individually email uh gabe and me and then i could get that started so you could re just try to review it maybe as part of the work on the 13th and what i would find helpful for that also is if i mean you've obviously interviewed before um for a superintendent position questions that you found that maybe <coughs> may not be on that list if you could add questions that you found helpful okay. or, or questions in your position that you are now that you look and say these are things the incoming superintendent needs to have a good understanding of or a good grasp of that would yeah. be really helpful you know For your sure. job better than anyone great yeah i'm happy to do that good so once the once you've made a determination as to who you want to come back and interview on the 20th and 21st i'll i will um, call them and get, get them in the schedule um, interviews uh, will start at 5.30, and what I want to talk with you now about is an observer panel and the opportunity for members of the community and members of the district to observe this process and the interaction between you and the uh, candidate and 
how they answer questions. That um, this, inter this observation panel, we have an application method so that if someone's interested, they can just fill out the application, send it in, and then uh, we're going to do a random uh, number generator and select, it's just going to be a random selection of community and of staff. But I'm, just, I'm going to move ahead with that if you're all uh, wanting and let's uh, the panel. You can sit off to the side and just kind of watch this. You'll be at, at the dais during these interviews. Candidate will be right here, <coughs> observer panel, back over this way. So these are public uh, interviews. So there could be a Anybody lot of other people in the audience that may come and watch this, and they can fill out uh, input. input as well. But the observer panel, the way we have done this, and we did it last time, was with a Chromebook or some method for them to give real-time feedback to you as a board, and that can also be printed out. I think it's an excellent idea. I'm curious to know, you said that it's community members and staff members. Mm -hmm. If we do a random number generation, is there a way to make sure that we have, can we at least control it enough that it's an even or even-ish number of staff versus community members? I, I would hate I'm, to. We're recommending 10. Right, but can we, can we make sure that it's five and five? Or that it's six and four. I, what I don't want to end up is ten apiece. Oh, ten apiece. Oh, it'll oh, oh, be twenty. The Sorry. Second handout is. Does that explain it? Okay. Here, yeah, twenty. Twenty total. Okay. Would go yeah, That's great. I just my concern was that it was going to be heavy one side or the other, and I want to make sure both groups are represented. Oh yeah. So. No. This, okay. So it'd be random um, pick of community and <clears throat> a different pick of for staff. staff. And, that's, and you can see the there's. Um, in your in your uh, packet, you see the invitation to apply to the interview panel. There's there's the language that would go out, and this can go out um, over your key communicators. To, uh, I know you have to all staff. It can be a media release. It can, and that that is a time certain that that has to be in on March eighth. As well. I have a question. Why? Just better understanding. Why are we doing random number generator? So I think the thinking is, if there's say there's 15 applications, mm -hmm. uh, how 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 would we select? I and guess. Why do we ask questions about community involvement? Yeah, I was actually going to ask that too. Things like yeah, that, because well, I don't not. think it. I, I was wondering that same thing. Yeah, that because I'll tell you what. Yeah, please. Because sometimes board want to down and get a cross section of the community, mm -hmm. and that's that demographic allows for. Uh, well, so I guess it wouldn't apply. If, you're right. It wouldn't apply in this case. Because, because, to your point exactly, I mean, part of me says, why don't we select the ten? by looking at their involvement so we can get a nice cross section of the community. If we do it random, we could get potentially 10 people will look exactly the same. And and if we took 10 people and tried to, I mean, personally, I'd, I'd love to hear from a wide variety. And I, I don't know, what are your thoughts? I agree, we, we want a cross section. I think we want uh, a, a panel to look as close to the community as they can. And certainly um, picking it would make that, would de to our Best of our knowledge, you know, but the, but it is, but just but the random. Uh, that's not, the nice thing about that is it just shows no favoritism. It just is, you know. So I can see both ways. Oh yeah. So the um, there's multiple ways to do it, um, as as we discussed. One of the ways that's happened in the past is the board just picks the people and sets them on there. Now we're obviously opening the interview up to everyone. So if 100 people show up, 100 people can fill out the. Thing and, and turn it in right but um, as far as the panel goes the random nu number generator being done by the district removes removes any narrative or anything that the we'll board accused of did being, anything you know, we'll so get accused of like cherry picking it, or whatever it keep it keeps it fair and as balanced as possible so yeah 
Yeah. I, I'm fine either way. I just I was curious. I mean, what Josh says makes actually makes sense. You know? I mean, the boards have, this is this is your process. The boards have done it multiple ways. Some some boards say each board member picks two people. Yeah, that's the way to do. And there's the board where they say no. We want people to apply and we want to know how they fit. And then there's random. It, it, whatever is going to work best and uh, put the board feeling uh, comfortable with Mike? Uh, the process. Mike, what do you think? I'm going to do what? I uh, think we're safest to randomize it. Oh, like, we'll randomize it for sure. And, uh, yeah, I, picking people. I think we're still putting ourselves up to grief. I, I, I think we're people. accused Sounds of good. something. Yeah. You know, we we'll back. So it, if that's the route you're going to go, then I think we wouldn't need to ask a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. I think the only the, the value of the questions is that it kind of self weeds it selects. If you have to answer the questions, maybe they don't pertain to being selected or not, but it does kind of self-select those that are you do, I think you want going to put forth. Yeah, and I, I, you yeah, know, I, when you're required yeah. to put thought to paper, it shows that you're serious about <clears throat> the reason you're there. But at the same time, I wouldn't want to lose somebody simply because they haven't been particularly involved. In, and a lot of the parents in our community may not be particularly involved in any organization or activity, but still value their input maybe we could sure. at least make sure they're in the in the community like if they yeah, are a resident, sure. they you know, resident like, in the community. maybe there's some like basic questions like your address yeah, actually that's the top three yeah. you have a child so, well, we so if, this... we, if we left the all of the questions except for that community involvement mm -hmm. box yes. and just took that off yeah. everything yeah. else could be just yeah but started. also you don't have to i mean it doesn't have to be a community member that has a child in the kennewick school district i mean that's that's an important sure segment of the community as well. That yeah. And they just want somebody in the school district. Well, yes, yeah, someone who lives yeah. in Kennewick, yeah. right? But I don't know that it has to be someone who has a so child. Bit, However, maybe right down at the bottom. And actually, I guess just quickly looking at the top, that's we don't say that anywhere on here. Oh, okay, actually, the last one. Sorry, I was looking at the top. I'm currently a resident of the Kennewick School District. Perfect. Yeah. And we'll delete that. Right. And so, just so we're clear. Because we'll, we're going to turn this into some kind of electronic Why? application. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want to eliminate the? Do you have a, those questions? Do you have a child? I think it's good children. to know. I think it's good. I, I'm happy to know, but maybe that's not like a defining like if they, if they don't have a child. You know, well, it's like going to be random. We're, yeah, we're, yeah. Not yeah. Even, we're not even going to look at yeah. these. To be well, honest with you, my next question is staff and the real question yeah, is, is like is like this this community board like. I mean, they're not obviously picking or anything. It's just they're going to give us some feedback, and we're going to look at that feedback and help sure, us make our decision. Yeah, but it's yeah. also our decision. Now, though, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong. So the, the observation panel, though, they're going to have the ability in real time to provide feedback, and we're going to act. We're going to like take all that together and kind of have some sort of system with the feedback, right? Gonna, Is that so? We'll know like the community. These observers are saying candidate A. It was the top choice amongst you. So we'll we'll have some feedback like that, right? Versus anybody who just shows up, they're going to get the form, they're going to turn it in. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll have to catch that on the where, side. That's where I want to talk with Ron and, and yeah. the uh, technology-wise, we get it all figured out. Ron's got this. <laughs> so there there is a there is a point to being on the yeah. there is a point to being on the like putting in for the panel rather than yes. just showing oh, up sure. because that, your yeah. feedback is going to get captured and aggregated <laughs> with the other 20 people providing feedback to us. If you're if yep. you just show up and you fill out the form, we're going to collect it, it's but it's not going to be in that. It's yeah. not going to be the same. Form. Yeah. Okay. Also, there's a separate process. So you'll have the panel of the staff and the community, and then there are other people. Anybody can come. They can provide some input. And they can provide it. not going to be providing it at the level. Okay. That the panel. Okay. Great. So this is. So do you want to raise questions? And <laughs> back to those I questions. Know. Do you want to? I don't think it even matters, matters, honestly. I think if they if they live in Kennewick. Yeah, my concern is we have we have, you know, Kennewick taxpayers. Yeah. In this deal, I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. That's that's my bigger issue. Is we have people who are in the district. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. And that and that the application acknowledges their acknowledgement said they have to get this district. Exactly. Right. Everything so that's, else that's I, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Staff yeah. might not be residents. 
Yeah, yeah no, it's that, no, I'm just, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> yep, like, totally different though. Yeah. So that's, yeah. All right, good. Um, and they have to, they have to be here both, both days for every interview. Actually, can we, just one thought, sorry, on the staff, can we divide it up into two groups and do five of five? Five with, with student facing and five that are non-student facing? Without, because mm -hmm. those who want admin and yeah, yeah. So five admin, admin five, five janitors, teachers. all those people are one, and then teachers and paras are another group because they're very different groups, right? And, it's good and and if we're randomizing this, we could end up getting eight or nine teachers and one. Yeah, I like that idea. And if we just split those two, then we get a little bit. That that's a group we can easily a little more diversity yeah. and, and just diversify the group. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah, yeah. I like that. But that way, we're getting more input from people seeing different, who are seeing and experiencing different things. And you said that this closes on the 8th as well, Bill? Yeah. I'm going to call it. Yeah. Just get it in the same time. So just a little over, oh, like a week and a half to get the word out and get people to apply. And so we got to get on it. Yeah. Getting the word out. Okay. It won't take we long. We plan to get this out tomorrow. Yeah. Or Friday at the latest. We just have to build the application. Yeah. Hoping Robin people are paying Robin. attention. <laughs> <laughs> Robin and Ron are here. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So on the 21st, so that's so all board members here on the 20th and uh, 21st March. And after the last interview on the 21st, an executive session to uh, determine who you would like to come back for um, final interviews. Okay. All right. And then those are scheduled for April 8, 9, and 11. Now, if we only have one or two candidates that we really liked, for starters, do we, do, do we still, let's say we only had one candidate that we really liked, then do we still do a final interview? I would say... Uh, the final interview is more than just the final interview with us. It's, we'd, it's change, a full... we'd change the format. Yeah. I guess okay. we'd decide on the 13th. We do something different. Um, it's really um, difficult to have just one yeah. one candidate. Um, I, I predict it won't come down to that, but if it does, it's that person steps out, you're done. Um, we'll deal with that on the 13th. Okay. Because sounds good. So we'll just agree to be flexible at that point. After spring break, April 8, 9, and 11, that's a full day format. You can see a, a draft of that in your packet, what that day looks like. Um, for the board, um, the board gets together at 5 o'clock. So you, your obligations start at 5 and then run through the rest of the evening. And then on the 11th, you'll either have an executive session the evening of the 11th after the last candidate is done with their um, community forum, or um, you could do it the next morning, the next day. But most boards just get by uh, that time, they have a pretty good idea. Of what they do. And we have a board meeting on the 10th, right? It's a full week. Yeah, you need them every day. <laughs> Come out of yeah. spring break and be rested. And yeah. I think I like you guys. Yeah. Um, just real quick, Dr. Okay. Pierce. So um, Micah is going to step in and do the orientation on those three days. Okay, great. And then I have a, a question, and I don't know if this is a question for the board or for you, Bill, or both. But in terms of, like, I've talked to the Superintendent Student Advisory Council students uh, about this and um, you know making sure that at least hopefully all of them that at least most of them can um, participate on, on these three days how what's the pro how do we go about 
identifying like the, the district staff, the principal supervisors, directors, the business community leaders, just, just, yeah, it, certificated well, class fit staff. Is that like a we tap? You know what I mean? It's kind of the same thing with the panel. Do mm -hmm. just are the, are they invited? I don't think it's an everybody come. How does that? Yeah, what does that much, look? Pretty much. Pretty much. Oh, be. it is. Okay. Yeah. Anybody comes. The where it would uh, community business leaders would be an invitation. Okay. With or um, that you and the board have have regular communication with you when you get in here. Um, certificated classified staff, it's just anybody who, anybody who can come. Okay, and, so it's um, just open invitation so the room could for be, that. Okay. Be full. Okay. And, and it's so a, it's a I know the community forum is so and they could also come to that too. Yep, yes. Any and that's open yep. meeting staff, to all. Okay. Anybody can come to the open forum. Okay. So the one of one of uh, either either the board okay. or um, I'm be hosting this. Introduce the candidate. They take five or six minutes to introduce themselves, and then it's wide open. It's, it's how are they going to handle every and any question, and then we get feedback from each of those groups. But yeah, it's district staff. Everybody in the building can show up. Okay. So, so these these panels then these. These 45 minute panels. So, cabinet staff shows up at 9 to 9.50. They hear from the candidate. And after that, they've got 40 minutes to just whatever questions they have. Yep. How, how does the community forum one work then? Are we going to do sign ups? Like, you need to come and sign up? Because I, I, can't, I can't imagine. If you, if you I mean, anticipate that there will be. More people that will fill this room, and we need to go somewhere else. Well, I don't know about we'll okay. I don't know about filling the room, but I'm I'm just wondering how are we going to determine who gets to ask? Like, are we going to do like public comments? You sign up on the sheet, and then you get to ask your question. Yeah, I've, we've done it. We've done it both ways, where the can you you find out how the uh, candidate manages the room. Oh, okay. And manages. Um, difficult questions or one person trying to dominate the conversation and how they work themselves out of that and go around to other folks. Uh, you can learn a lot by how they manage that time. I've also seen it where questions can be written out and given to the, the moderator and then asked. Uh, I like so the that's, so, yeah. It, that's that um, you can find out a lot because you may have a person in the community that um, uh, enjoys coming to the meetings and and maybe dominating not well maybe dominating or trying to push on a certain issue that I think you can learn a lot about how a person uh, answers those questions and deals with people so so these, I know that the board involvement starts at five, but it seems to me that observing a lot of this is important into going into making well, a decision. Uh, here's what I'd recommend to <clears throat> that one or more board members, one at the most two, obviously, but one be the person that introduces each one of these um, uh, sections. I would say for the cabinet, that the, that board member not remain in the room during introduce them and then step out. Okay, I, I, that should be a different level of conversation than you might find with other other uh, here because believe it or not, sometimes the topic of the school board comes up. Yeah. So this is mainly an opportunity for the candidate to learn about the school district and. The people that they're talking to to fill out forms. Okay, so that was out. my next question: so Will we be getting on feedback each one of those candidates okay. from each one of those forms? But if there's someone who has the time to introduce and the uh, office staff and the council and the principals and kind of sit in the back and listen, that, that's a that's a good thing to spend the day. Then it sounds like they're going to be running that meeting in a sense, correct? Running the 
the principal supervisor and director meeting and running the business community meetings, right? It's an open forum. Yes. Yeah. So they'll be kind of doing it however they want. Yep. Do we want to make sure and notify them that they'll be doing that before so that they can kind of have a plan? Here's what I remember. Yeah. Um, so during that kind of orientation time in the morning, right, with the candidate, that's in addition to whatever you've talked to them ahead of time. But mm -hmm. for example, I, I, I'm I trying to remember, Bill, who was there, for example, with the Superintendent Student Advisory Council. When I was applying, I remember going into the room, someone was, it wasn't just me and the students that, you know, mm -hmm. I remember somebody <laughs> being me. there, was it you? Sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm there, no. I'm there and, and, all day. Yeah, and, and kind of facilitating yeah. it. And so there's like introducing and then, so it's not yeah. like they're just on their own. No. Um, so and, the but board, with the community forum, yeah, I remember you introduced, and then typically the candidate, you know, you've yeah. got a few, uh, oh, you kind of introduce yourself, talk about yourself, talk about whatever, and then it's open up for questions, and it was just like calling on people yeah. and talking. Yeah. So, so if this is a, I'm, I'm going to be there for sure, but if there's a board member that would like to come and say, hey, you know, this is a tough decision, we'd like to get your input, this is going to help us, that's a good message from the board to the participants. And if one of you are available at any one of those times, it doesn't need to be the same person all day, but you might just plug yourself in somewhere and say, yeah, I'd like to show up to this. And then the interview, the 5 to 6.30 p.m. in exec session with the board is, is what does that look like for the board? That looks like, uh, again, many times it's, sitting in the dais and a, a table here. Sometimes it's this close. I think um, we had a conference but there's, one of the conference yeah. rooms probably. Yeah. yeah. That would be, um, that would be good, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. And that's that's uh, the executive session. That's, that's where the questioning is, is not as formal as um, the uh, preliminary interviews. It's, it's it's more probing, more conversational. Discussion based. Uh, questions back and forth and interactions as you, as you, uh, it, as some, something that said draws another comment to your mind and you can jump in and, and try and pin that down right then. So it's a different format. We'll cover that on uh, when we finish the preliminary interviews. I'll give you some um a draft of how that might look so it's it's less formal more probing more conversational but we can get into some it's an executive session we can get into some serious things about you know their background or their experience or they may ask you too so yeah some tough questions at that time Okay. What um, what other questions might you have? Or what can I clear up? Well, one question that I don't know if I just I think it's okay to say this out loud, but um, when we're asking questions to them, I think maybe having some scenarios. I've got that thing. Okay. It's the what what would you do if or what about this? Or, okay. Yeah. yeah, in relation to finance and personnel and, yeah. and uh, what kind of okay. curriculum. Yeah, good, good, Michael. Um, now, we'll just be flexible if we say we only take two to final interviews, say we just have two that we want to discuss, mm -hmm. then we'll just decide what day we prefer to have them in. Right, we and then just cancel it on the third day or whatever it might be. Yeah, I, I send them the the um, search calendar so that they they know that these days, if they're in the hunt, yeah. they block out yeah. that day. Yeah. Okay. Any other so questions about the process? Tracy, <laughs> do you feel like this is good? I mean, you've been through this process. Is this is this in yeah, I, I think this is the, 
kind of you know typical process and it's a good process i think you definitely want to hear all different voices and it while it's the board's decision it's it's important to get the input you know from all the all the different groups and i think it's a rigorous process too and is there going to be an opportunity for each of these groups i guess this was kind of asked and maybe you said there's a form but is there a, a way we can get feedback quickly from each of these? They'll, they'll fill out a form. Okay. Mm. So just by form, and then yeah. we get that when. Okay. okay. I mean, I'll be turning those probably into Patty or. or uh, so we can explain. Yeah, I expect to get them that evening at eight thirty or something after the forum, so we can look over. I, ideally, I guess part of it is, is I would love to get those responses. When I'm walking into my executive session at five, so I can already see. Yeah, you know. Okay. Because I just gonna, think that would be helpful. You're gonna want to get uh, a little early. Yeah. Because that interview is gonna start. So there'll be multiple ones throughout the day. Yeah. This you is yeah, I stage? do, and and it's maybe more logistics. Yeah. How. how so are these paper forms that people fill out? And so um, it's not really a collated kind of and I guess you're that's not gonna get a, thing. You're not going to get a print out of them. I guess what I'm trying to say is, is I would really like feedback if it's possible. I, and if maybe if I'm just the only one, I'll be quiet. But I would like feedback going into the executive session at 5 o'clock, uh, feedback from what the superintendent, student advisory council thought, what the principals thought. Obviously, Tracy, you'll be there so we can get input from you and the business community leaders because if if they express a concern, I can then ask questions about it during the executive session. So what that would, uh, I would recommend that you, you guys plan on getting together at 430 or, or 4. Am I the only one that feels that way? No, I, I no, do feel that way. I'm, I'm wondering if it, is it possible to have those that are instead of filling out paper reviews to do a Google Docs because then everything can be entered you know, on, the, on the back side yeah. it, yeah. it presents as a spreadsheet and then we can all have access and to the, the same thing. Yes. Okay, I know the logistics of it. Have, <laughs> right. Not everybody's going to have a Chromebook or access and so they can do paper if they want. I think yeah, we can have paper available, but even if we had a QR code that someone could just use their phone to scan with and just. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just trying yeah, to figure out a way that, that we can kind of you get that, that quickly work. and yeah. 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 you can digest it, right? Ron says he, Ron he was shaking his head like, yeah, yeah. I got this handle. Yeah, he he does. Does. Scan so let me, can I throw a curveball here real quick, maybe? What if it might buy us a little more time to get that feedback, but what if the exec session and the community forum were flipped and the exec session was the last thing? So then as board members, we could come to the community forum, we could sit, we could listen here, we could review feedback. It gives us a little more time to do that. And then the last thing is is that discussion might be beneficial. I don't know. I, I like that because then again, it, it provides us, to me, I see it as that's the time, that executive session, it, it's essentially behind closed doors, right? Mm -hmm. So we can ask him any of the questions that may have come up as concerns yeah. along the way. So if we're sitting in the community forum and or her. <laughs> or her uh, excuse me. Her. Yes. Anyway. I'll use the. Yeah. If, if we're sitting in the forum and and she, there are concerns about that she had, that have been brought up earlier. We can ask her specifically about those issues. And I guess that's that's my whole thing is is we're doing all this, which is awesome, but but ultimately, yeah, I think the decision is easy. up to the five of us. And if yeah. we don't get that information, it doesn't help us. Yeah. Is there any downside to flipping that? Maybe see. I think. It's uh, if you could get. Will that bring people? Is that a time that people will come in? Yeah, that was my only concern. Our board meetings start at 5.30, which aren't, isn't too much off from that time. So it's the time that the community is accustomed to showing up. Or we to, could do dinner. Or we could do dinner at the 5. Yeah, and then yeah. do dinner at 5 to 5.45. And then we do that would work. the community yeah. session from 5.45 to yeah. And, well, yeah. yeah, that would get people <coughs> able to come in from work or whatever else they're doing. Yeah. So, yeah, um, let's do that. My next question is obviously things have changed a little bit with um, videoing. So, are these sessions going to be 
recorded or live streamed like we do our board session. Executive so session? not the executive yeah. session, but like but like all these ones throughout the day. So no. boardroom A, B, like none of the OK, <coughs> so that's just you're here. Yeah, not unless I, that's a protocol that has to happen. In this no, I, think okay. that I, I want if the community forum, if that's a board meeting, then that needs to not now. Board meeting. Well, the problem is, is there will be. But if there's some, there's going to be three of us here, there, probably at least. Right? I imagine most of us, if we're having dinner with them, mm -hmm. would stay for the. We, right. we won't be leaving just yeah. for the board, so that we probably right. would need. And, and right. I actually think it's great to have people, so that people are at home, just like we do the, the, public comment section. If people at home, you know, that are online, can submit questions, because they may not be able to come. I don't know. That's my. Again, more feedback to me gives us. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of logistics of doing that, how we would, because I think the community forum sounds like it's going to be more of a free forum, having them work the room, do their thing. Yeah. Again, you tell me, I've never been to one. So, yeah. but if that's the case, then, then we're going to cut the. Oh, good point. So, again, we can totally do it. We, we can do that for half time, say, okay, hey, just stop. We're now we're going to take you know, questions from uh, online if we have them or, or from the. Well, and I guess well. technically it's not a board meeting. <laughs> we aren't. We aren't participating, correct? If we don't discuss any business, if we're just sitting. Well, you're in the, sitting in the. You're sitting back. If we're just sitting on the sides or in the crowd. If we don't discuss any business, then it's not a board meeting. No, by the, my, my recommendation would be if the board all wants to be there, which I think is a good idea for the community forum, and it's between the dinner, so you'll and the exec session, so you'll all be here. We could um, have it as a board meeting, and have it broadcast as a board meeting but i think it would be challenging to do the ask a question yes. from remotely oh, yeah. Yeah. but there's i think it could be it there could unless be there's some reason why it couldn't be but you know we broadcast board meetings and it would be a board meeting slash community forum you wouldn't be doing any business or anything like that but then we would just do the live stream i would that's it. that's kind of what i was kind of thinking myself was Posted as a board meeting, the community forum. We live stream it. If you can't make it, at least you can watch it. Yep. If you've got questions or concerns, shoot us an email to the board so we can see it. But again, the, the logistics of trying to monitor the chat to ask questions would be difficult. And I think too, if you sh if at the end of the day, if you take the time out and you show up to the event and you have a question, I think you should have a chance to ask your question versus trying to pick through zoom questions and stuff so but i i think i think playing it or live streaming it i think that just opens it up again to the more people get the more open it is the better yep. so start with dinner at five when that ron comes back in after we have all the technical <laughs> questions <laughs> all right all right okay dinner at five community forum six thirty Executive session, um, seven thirty. Okay. Yep. Do, do we need an hour? An hour? We probably don't need an hour and a half for dinner. No. No. no, no five. So just no, like no. five. You want to do five thirty to six thirty, or well, we had five dinner. to six? You want to bump everything up or back? Dinner was fit forty-five minutes is what yeah. I had on here. So yeah. Five to five forty-five, and then you do the community forum being an hour, so then do like five six to seven. Yeah. Just so there's a yeah. little time yeah. between six to seven. And then we'll do seven to eight thirty for the. Okay. Well, uh, let me think. Because the community forum though was, was oh it was an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just keeping Six the times exactly yep. the same. Yep. Yep. And then like seven fifteen exec session. To. Eight thirty. Yeah. Ish. And then we're done. Yeah. Wait. Seven fifteen. Sorry. Six. If you go <laughs> I'll figure it five out. to five forty five <laughs> and then six I got it. <laughs> to, uh, yeah, six I, to seven. I just and, and yeah, I see I what they did. There was no interim between the executive session and the dinner right now. Yeah. So yeah. If we do add one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be fine. I think I think we've kind of ironed out the logistics. It is it is five o'clock. Is there any other final questions or comments? Thank you guys. Thank you for all your work. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, if nothing else, we'll adjourn the study session and we will pick up the regular session in a half an hour at five thirty.